This video was sponsored by JLC PCB. Hello everyone, today I've got something special for you. This is my brand new 6 layer FLCOS driver board. It's easily the smallest one yet. It uses all of the original components and works basically the same as the original one. As you can see, it's way smaller than the original AliExpress one. I've removed the cable connector and moved the components around so it's way smaller than before. Whole driver board is now basically the same size as the display itself. This makes it possible for super slim builds. You can see it better here. I don't think it's possible to get it any smaller than this. It still uses the same connector, so you can basically unplug your old driver board and plug in the new slim one. I've started the project by grabbing the original driver board on AliExpress. I've then completely remade the original board in Autodesk Fusion, which got me my own driver board clone. It also left me with complete driver board schematics, which I can modify whatever way I like. I've moved some stuff around, removed unneeded parts and that gave me my newest driver board version. I've also changed it to be 6 layer instead of 4. Now that I have my board ready, I can generate the Gerber files and order the physical boards. For this I will use the CAM processor and JLC PCB 6 layer board CAM file. It's all super easy to do. You just load up the CAM file and basically click one button to make the Gerber files. And now the Gerber files are ready for order. Now you can go to the JLC PCB website, select the Gerber files to upload, wait a second for the upload process, and now you can choose the board properties. The 6 layer board is considered premium, since it requires a lot of precision manufacturing and attention to detail. On the website you can customize the board thickness and change the solder mask color as well. I always choose to remove the production mark, since it leaves you with nice and clean board. Now you can add the board to your cart and proceed with the checkout. I always choose Euro Packet since it's pretty fast and cheap. I also select Review before payment, just in case. As always, my package arrived pretty quick, even though I live in Europe and it's quite a long way from China. It was packaged very well, which made sure that my boards won't get damaged. I've actually ordered two versions of this board, the safe one and the more experimental one. Those are very similar to each other, but the more experimental one has some changes that may make it not work. This one is the safe one. It's basically the original proof design, with some components moved around and layer stack changed to 6 layers instead of 4. As you can see, the quality is very good. You can see all of the traces clearly, even the super small ones. One thing I noticed is that the solder pads are now gold. This actually makes it slightly easier to solder. And here is the more experimental version. This one has some internal changes that I'm not sure will work. I've also reduced the board outline near the main chip to minimum. Board will be super difficult to solder with all of the components so close to the edge. But if I can get it right this time, then it will be a huge upgrade from the previous version. As always, I will start by covering all of the solder pads with solder. I'm using Hotter Station to assemble all of my boards, but you can use any other tool. You can use hot plate, regular soldering iron or even Owen. I'm also using a ton of flags, which makes soldering super easy. I try to avoid adding solder to the display connector, as it's better to solder it by hand with regular soldering iron. There are some brown stains on the board now, but you can easily clean them off with IPA, alcohol and toothbrush. I will transfer all of the components from my other board. I don't want to waste any parts and it's just easier this way. You can of course make the whole board from scratch, but there is an issue with the microcontroller which drives the main chip. The problem is that there is some kind of code on the microcontroller which cannot be replicated. I don't know how to write one as well. I tried looking for method of replicating the chip code, but it seems there is a red protection in place. So I'm pretty much stuck on transferring the components from original board, at least the microcontroller chip. And here is the fully assembled board. There are some issues with the solder mask, but it's purely cosmetic. Here you can see how much smaller it is compared to the original driver board. The size difference between those two is actually crazy. I've had to make some weird changes to make it this small. 
Ok, so let's plug it in now and see how it works. To test the board out, I will use the original FLCOS display that came with the AliExpress board. I will connect the driver board to my own HDMI converter, which in turn will be connected to my PC. Here you can more or less see that it displays my Windows desktop. It's super difficult to get it on camera since the display is less than 0.3 inch. I have this small convex lens which can help me record the screen. It's still super difficult though. Screen is of course perfectly visible when using original optics which came with the display. In addition to screen being so small, it's hard to get my iPhone in focus as well, so sorry if it's hard to tell what's going on. Anyway, that's all for today. There is of course more stuff to make, so see you in the next video. Thanks for watching everyone.